This is Mindy Mizell, Public Relations Director for Mission of Hope Haiti, talking with Brad Johnson, the president of the organization. Brad, it's great to talk to you, as, especially as we near the four-year anniversary of the earthquake that hit in 2010. Looking back, I know so much work has been done as an organization, but take me back to that time. How much damage was really done uh, across the nation of Haiti, and, and how were you able to quickly respond given the need immediately? I can't, I can't express what the damage was like. Uh, I had been going to Haiti since I was five years old, and I knew the landmarks that were all over the country, but to go in to that country right after the earthquake and see the damage that was done and the buildings that were there that were leveled uh, was uh, something that you, you never can even imagine in your, your worst nightmares. Uh, probably the, the thing that that's etched in my mind that I'll be there forever is as I drove out of the city seeing hundreds of thousands of people with the little that they owned on their shoulders and their children's by their children by their sides and they were walking out of the city trying to find refuge. Uh, that's something that um, just it's still four years later is still very fresh. Yeah, and I know uh, this was one of the largest earthquakes that we'd seen, 7.0 magnitude earthquake that hit. Uh, it not only rattled uh, much of the nation of Haiti, but it even hit as close to uh, the organization's campus. I mean, even the walls, I understand, were somewhat damaged. But you, as an organization, uh, were tasked with having to respond uh, immediately and switch into relief mode. Can you talk to me about, you know, how much was your, your staff impacted and yet how were you able to respond? Yeah, you, you know, our staff, every person that's on our staff was impacted. Either they lost something or they lost someone. Uh, it was incredible just to be able to speak to them. So we had to go right into response mode to help our staff and then help the people of the nation. And uh, we were blessed that we had just got in right before the earthquake uh, shipment of food. We had a million and a half meals in our warehouse and we were able to start to distribute that all throughout the country through churches and schools uh, that we worked with previously to the quake. So we were able to go right into disaster relief mode. And then we started having North American doctors come in that were doing surgeries. We set up a ward that we could start to bring people into. And, and over time, we were able to see uh, really thousands of people come through our campus that like you said, Mindy, had just a few scratches. It was a, there was a few cracks, but no structural damage. Even though right around us there was uh, big corporations that had buildings fall, uh, we were blessed to be able to sustain the earthquake and be ready to to respond. I think so many people are probably sitting back and thinking, wow, it's been four years, but really, has there been a significant change on the ground? I know Mission of Hope Haiti actually got more than a million dollars in donations. How has that money been used and has enough come in uh, to make really a change there? The money that came in was used and is still being used as more comes in to build homes. One of the things that we've done is the government gave us 100 acres of property that was barren at the time to build homes for families. Uh, we've plotted that whole property out to date. We've built over 430 homes on our way to 650 homes uh, for families that have been living in tents since the earthquake. Uh, and we've also been able to build a school there and a church there, uh, start an agricultural program there. So we're seeing a lot of good things nationwide. The nation is really rebounding. Uh, the, Haiti, the people of Haiti are so industrious and so resilient. They lost everything in the, the Port-au-Prince area, and they've come back strong. And I think the organization, uh, you know, itself was actually dramatically changed. This became a, a game changer, really, for not only Haiti, but for Mission of Hope Haiti as an organization, because you've been around for 15 years, but four years ago, uh, this really uh, opened up a whole lot of need that needed to be met. I know you've got a, a clinic, a hospital, so many other uh, buildings and resources being built. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what really evolved and changed out of this uh, disaster? Yeah, you know, the core of who we are, our vision has not changed. Uh, we're an organization following Jesus Christ, and we, bring, we seek to bring life transformation to every man, woman, and child in Haiti. But how we responded certainly has changed. Since the earthquake, we've been able to build, with one of our partners, Convoy of Hope, a 35,000-square-foot warehouse. So that's how today we're feeding over 80,000 children a day throughout the nation. Uh, because of that warehouse being able to bring the food in and then distribute it from there. As well, we've uh, 
expanded our school greatly. We went from 1,200 kids to over 5,000 this year. Uh, so we're seeing that growth. Uh, our church has grown tremendously. We've, we've actually added two new churches since the earthquake. So we're seeing growth there. Our hospital went from a very small clinic to now we are doing mobile clinics all throughout the country, as well as uh, we've started a prosthetic lab that is now building limbs for those people that have lost uh, their limbs during the earthquake. So the mission has grown uh, tremendously with the same vision. Exactly. And I know I've seen uh, the work firsthand myself in person, but so have thousands of people. I think what is so impressive is, is that Mission of Hope Haiti really invites partners or volunteers to come in and be the hands and feet uh, of the organization themselves. And uh, more than 5,000 uh, partners, uh, people have uh, visited the campus as of last year uh, and more every single year come. And you partner with hundreds of churches. Let's talk about the future, Brad. What else needs to happen in the coming years to really uh, be game changers for Haiti again? Yeah, one of the things that we're working on right now is a trade school. We're actually building and just just acquired the property to build a trade school that will teach the young men and women skills that they can go out and actually re re get jobs and then they can start to receive an income. And with that, that's a game changer because for us, being able to teach them the principles that we've learned from the Bible and then applying that to life as well as them getting a life skill that is applicable to what Haiti needs, what the business class is telling us they want to hire. Uh, that's a game changer for thousands of young men and women that will be able to come through there. As well, we're working on not just importing food. By the, by the year 2020, we want to stop importing all the food and be buying all the food locally from Haitian farmers. Uh, today, we're about 5 to 10 percent that we're buying from Haitian farmers. We've actually started to package our own food in-house so that we can then distribute it back out. So for us, we really want to see the, the Haitian people equipped so that they can take care of their needs and that we can show them the love of Christ through gifting them and, and, and enabling them to take care of their own country. Well, Brad, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I know so much more work needs to be done, but a lot has been done in the last four years. I know uh, there are opportunities to serve on the ground or with financial donations. Very simply, just go to the website. It's mohhaiti.org.